I'm Robert Field, and I am fishing my way across all 50 states while living in an RV full time. This time, we're on the hunt for one of the rarest fish species in the US, the Apache trout, which can only be found right here in the White Mountains of Arizona. Oh, he's trying to go upstream, holy sh You're watching Field Trips with Robert Field. Hey guys, welcome back to Field Trips and welcome back to Arizona. So if you caught last episode, we were out with Cinda Howard. She showed us the ropes of fly fishing. It is now, what is it? Three in the morning, three-ish in the morning. We are gonna go back to the East Fork of the Black River in hopes of catching an Apache trout. That is the species that only lives here in this part of Arizona, the only place in the world you can catch an Apache trout but it is early, we just woke up. We're gonna basically drive an hour right now, get to the river, and then we gotta hike in about a mile. It's so early. It's so early. We gotta hike in a mile before we can even really start fishing, but we're gonna get there early in hopes that that early morning low light bite might yield us this Apache trout, scratch this fish off our bucket list. I'm going back to bed. <laughs> See you guys soon. It's gonna be great. It's also black bear country. And they warned us not to hike in the dark because of the black bears. And they said, if you are gonna hike in the dark, make sure not to have any food on you, but we have to have some food on us. This doesn't feel right. What's the worst that could happen? Besides death and dismemberment. We'll see you soon. We'll see you soon. It's gonna be good. I need more coffee, for sure. All right, hiking through the through the woods over rocks with two fly rods is not as easy as we thought it was going to be. But no one's broken an ankle yet, so that's good. But we have this like bramble patch coming up. We don't see a way around it. I mean, we can barely see anything with the headlights. So I think we're going to have to go through it. This might be a nightmare. There's more. I can't really tell, man. I think this is the way she told us not to go. The down log or something. Oh, oh gosh. What? The? I don't know if hiking in the dark was the best idea, but we out here now. I don't know if I want to go this fishing this bad. All part of the adventure. There's a trail. Yeah. Well, this is nice. This is better. All right, well, first kind of signs of light are coming visible over these cliffs that are surrounding us. We're finally able to kind of see where we're going. This terrain is uh, treacherous, I would say. Tons of rocks and moving rocks and uh, tons of tons of downed trees from the fire, but just gorgeous and so peaceful out here. We have not seen a human for sure. I don't think we will all day. It's just beautiful, but it feels good to be able to see where we're walking. It's been, it was a little, a little sketchy, first part of this, but. Coming up some good water now, so I think we'll start fishing uh, just up here around the bend, but it's a great day to be alive. Great place to be alive. Let's keep going. Got him. <laughs> Little guy.
Sweet. It's a little guy, but here early in the morning. Beautiful. What colors on those oh. fish. Oh. Every time. <laughs> it's all right. Great job. Thanks, man. One of these days, I'm gonna get a really nice release. Doubt that's, it. That's my goal for the end of this trip. Doubt it. <laughs> hey, great job. Thanks. <clears throat> Oh, oh man! Dude, we can keep that one. That's a keeper. <laughs> Tree pounder. That's definitely a limb brim. Get the hero shot. <laughs> I didn't put my hands first. Bad form. Is it? Got him. Got him. Better one, huh? A little bit better. I thought he took the Dude, he, he hit that aggressively. Hey, I'll, I'll net him. I'm here. Dude, this rod might be my new favorite rod. I'm not even kidding. Nice. Got him. Woo! Dude, back to back, bud. And they're getting bigger. Bigger. Hopefully we get a big one today, dude. Yeah. Like a big, big one, you know? They're bigger in here for sure. <laughs> He's still super feisty. Beautiful, man. <laughs> you know, she said like with this cold water, since yeah. it's just ice out, but like they're super energetic. All right. To get a little release of this butte. Great they job. Are our gorgeous little fish. It's your time to shine. There. He's just posted up right here. Dude, he looks just like a stick or a rock. Yeah, they blend in so well. Like, that's amazing. This is gonna be fun, dude. Boop! You're getting it down. You're pro now. He hit the dry? That was like that other one. That oh, dude, you you ripped that. Not so hard. Bro, it, I, I, as soon as oh, got him on the drive. On the dry fly. No way. In the net. <laughs> dude, the, I think I got the eat. On the dry fly. Still so feisty. Look at it. Oh. <laughs> He's ready to go. That was wild. We are really not expecting dry fly bites, topwater bites on these hoppers. They're huge, but there are grasshoppers jumping all around as we hike through this, this canyon. And so we thought, you know, maybe, but for a fish this small to eat that huge hopper, I did not see that coming. And he actually attacked it and I set the hook too soon, I think. And I stuck, slung it right back in there and he did not care. He came back for a second time. So sweet. That's awesome. This is fun here. Just getting, just getting going really. Light's starting to come up over the hills. This is sweet, you guys. Wild fish in wild places. These are all wild brown trout. There are none, none stocked in here. Just what a treat. Let's keep going. God, I can't see it now. It's not floating in this fast water. Yeah. And it's partly because my line is is hitting the swift water and it's pulling it under. Like you gotta keep your line. Keep the line as it comes down. Uh, I guess. I don't know, this is pretty tough here. Yeah. And like if you look up there, dude, it's even swifter. All right, so this section here is super, super swift. So we're gonna keep working our way up. See if we can get around this, find a little bit slower water. It's just really hard to fish this with our setups. I gotta believe there's some trout in here, but it's just taking our dry fly too fast. 
keep moving. We're gonna back up, get out of the river, see what lies around the next bend. Just around the river bend. Man, not a bad place to spend a morning, brother. Not at all. Look at this. First thing we gotta do is look at it. It's warming up. Bugs are emerging. Mm. What's your comment? Beautiful. The place. Let's get it. Let's get after it. Ain't nothing to it but to do it. Oh yeah, this way. <laughs> Still waking up, Brooks. <laughs> oh, oh dude. Oh yeah. Oh, there's more down below it. Got big horn sheep up here on the cliff face. There's so many of them. They definitely heard us coming. Not sure about us. Not a bad thing to stumble on this morning. It's that time of year, man. Babies are out. Look at this little baby. Check this out, guys. I'm right below them now. They have not spooked off. They're heading up this little ravine. Just look at this. Pretty cool, you know, we've been fishing all morning and you kind of get lost and you're just hyper focused on the river and Brooks just happened to look up and I mean who knows how long these things have been watching us uh, trying to catch fish this morning and I mean they're not scared of us like they know these two bozos are not getting up this cliff to get to us they're curious but they do not seem skittish or concerned in any way big horn sheep's an animal I've been wanting to see for a long time South Dakota I struck out and here they are so occasionally like they'll hear us move they'll like turn yeah and I'm like He's like just up there on the mountain looking down and like if this dude comes down. If he did charge us, I would run. <laughs> no doubt. Couple close calls there. Man, up above, man, there's got to be fish. Look at that giant boulder, the swift water. Oh, come on. God, that looked good going by that grass edge, too. I don't know if you can get one there, but over to the left. Oh, no. -uh. Yeah, buddy. Sweet. Come here, little guy. Come here, little guy. All right. Nice. Monster. I do wish this had a little longer. Oh, no. Is it through? It went through your net. It went through the net. Oh, dude, look how pretty it is. Dude, what a beautiful fish. Look at those spots. Yeah. It's about to go through, it just no, went through again. It. Now it's out of your net. Did you do it again? He got off. <laughs> those, are, those are big holes in the bottom, I didn't think about that. I mean, that's a small that's fish. That's a small fish. What, yeah. I got six shots of that thing. <laughs> <laughs> nice work, man. I was gonna tell you to go over there to the left. See the left of that boulder? Yeah, I was gonna... Yeah, you, but, but obviously... Man, I bet there's another fish in there. Sling it back in there. If you spoot to me, spoot to me. Give it a shot. Yep, yep. We'll try to hit that left side. Maybe they're not spooked. Yeah. Dude. Dude, I love this little rod. My Gunslinger. This little rod just does it though. That was beautiful. Like, it just punches it. That like little whip it gets Yeah, it. that was a great, I great gonna, roll cast too. Like You've uh... You see how it just like... Yeah. And you're really doing a good job at loading the rod. Like, 
one day and you're you're roll casting like a champ. Yep, look at that, dude, sniping them. So many bugs. Got him. Nice. Oh, he's running. I think he's decent. Nice. Oh, he's not very big, actually. He's strong, though. Golly. Got him. Sweet. Him? Yep. Right. Boy. Man. Back to back, bud. Back to back, bud. Now we're cooking with peanut oil. All right. Beautiful, beautiful little brown trout. Look at that. Look at the red just lighting up on this fish. Wow. Look at the colors on that. That feels good. Good fish. Not a monster, but a nice one. The, the sun's come up enough now that We've got good visibility, but the river's still in shadow, so I couldn't really see what I was fishing. I was just following the foam lines. Uh, later in the day, it'll be a lot easier because we'll, we'll be able to avoid things and, and really target underwater structure a lot more accurately. Right now, it's kind of just picking the good current lines and just pick them apart and then move up and, and pick apart the next one. And uh, that one, it was about the third flick to the left from the right edge, and uh, there it was, super fun. Still feisty, beautiful little fish. Look at the colors. So uh, that, that last brown trout just slipped out of the net and I tried to scoop it back up, caught something else instead. So we traded. Yeah, we kind of downgraded a little bit. But there's a crawfish. We've been seeing their molt. They basically molt their, their, their exoskeleton, their shell, and they drop it. We've seen a ton of them on the banks. They've been like light blue and orange and stuff, and this guy's brown and orange. Yep, crawfish will change color throughout the year, and so when you're using crawfish patterns, uh, whether conventional fishing or fly fishing, you always want to be matching the hatch on these crawfish and, and using the right color. But pretty funny, I tried to scoop up a brown trout and I caught a crawfish instead. We've been seeing them everywhere, and, and trout will eat crawfish. And you can see it's the business end. <laughs> pretty cool. <laughs> These guys are fast in the water. <laughs> well guys, I promise we are releasing these brown trout. We are not stuffing them in our pockets, but uh, in our effort to, to get photos of these things, they're slimy little boogers and they're uh, evading us, but that's okay. Swam off strong, obviously still feisty. That's more important. We're gonna keep working up. Sun's coming up. Let's see if we can get in some more fish. Phew, it's been a fun day already. Fun morning, it was worth the 3 a.m. alarm. <laughs> oh God. It's just look good because like the left side is so shallow. Yeah. And the right side is pretty like a bit of a fish is gonna strip them up the grass. And... Alright, so we just stopped here for a little lunch break. And one thing I bought for this trip is this water filtration bottle. Basically, we're hiking through here, we're hiking all day, and if we were just fly fishing, we could get away with a few snacks and just our flies in this little pack, but because we're filming all this, we've got extra batteries, camera gear, all sorts of stuff with us, and so we're loaded down, and water weight just really makes it a nightmare. So I've never used this. It says you just fill it up with the river water and then uh, drink through the straw, and that's it. If they're wrong, this might be a long hike back. We're, we're about to find out, but we're just gonna find some moving water. The water is beautiful. That does not mean it's safe to drink, but we do know that there's basically nothing upstream of us for about five miles. And so hopefully this will get it done. We'll see, not endorsing this, do it at your own risk, but I'm thirsty and uh, didn't bring enough water. So we're gonna have to. How's it look? There's only a few things floating in it. 
The test, the taste test. It tastes delicious. <laughs> that does not mean I'm not gonna regret this later. But it tastes great. <clears throat> Guess we'll find out. I might go easy and wait a little bit. See if I start rumbling. I was gonna say I might uh I might have to get into that before long. Yeah. I only got one water with me. I'll let you know. We'll see how I feel in 30 minutes. Oh, I'm on. Yeah. I don't have a net. Oh, it's a good one. Oh, he's trying to go upstream. Holy sh. I'm here. I'm here. Dude. Oh. Good fish. I'm going to wait for a good opportunity. Oh. Watch that stick. Oh. Oh gosh, he's in the stick. In the stick, I'll keep coming. Swing him in when you can, but take your time. Oh, take your time. Oh, great fish, dude. Great fish. Oh, I can't see. Wow, <laughs> man, nice. I think it's a, is it a rainbow? No, 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 it's just, uh. uh. Mm -hmm. oh, <laughs> stud brown, dude. Dude. Stud brown and flies out. Flies out. Oh my goodness. Oh, my man. Dude. Yeah, buddy. I'm like halfway tying this fly yeah, in one man. hand and. I appreciate you, bud. Oh. oh my, that's definitely my PB. That is definitely your PB. I think that's bigger than the one I got with Cinda. Dude, it was <sighs> like I floated that thing like five times where you already where you caught yours. Yeah, wow. Oh my goodness, my heart's racing, dude. That was insane. And, and on this it's little, such a fun fight when they get big. Yeah, and this little, four weight, this little little fiberglass orvis. And this little crazy little stretch. Yep. I can't believe you stayed button. Look at this beautiful brown trout for Brooksy here. He's still ready to go. Yeah, <laughs> plenty of fight left in it. Dude, I can't believe he got that in. Between the stick, it going upstream, around that, around rocks. Dude, that was... It's fun when they're that big, especially <laughs> on that four-weight fiberglass rod, huh? <laughs> it was... Yeah. So awesome, man. New to this type of fly fishing, and <coughs> that right there, that's a fish. That's a... That's yeah. what we're out here for in this in this river. I didn't I didn't really know what was going on when it happened, man. <laughs> it all uh... happened so fast. I was retying. I said, go ahead and make a few flicks in there while I retie. Yeah, that was... I'm here for it, man. It's, it's worth it, like you said earlier. Nick. Earlier, I was saying words I shouldn't be saying, getting tangled and Frust things breaking off, and yeah, it's worth it. It's <laughs> worth it. It all comes together. Well, what, what just happened, Brooks? I have wet arms and no fish. <laughs> Little squirmy booger squirmed right on out. <laughs> but it was released. We got proof of it. There's no sexy release. Sorry about that, Arizona. Sorry about that, Rob. <laughs> but nonetheless, it was a fun fight. Just found out something I need to get better at, and it's holding slimy fish. <laughs> Great job, man. Congrats. Incredible fish. Appreciate it, dude. You. Thanks for uh, bringing me out here. It's been a pleasure. Well, that was an absolute blast yesterday, hiking in in the dark and getting all those brown trout on the East Fork of the Black River just for a couple of guys that don't know what they're doing, just wandering around in that place to pull out the brown trout that we did. Just what a blast, so much fun. Now it's time to get back to the real mission here in the White Mountains of Arizona, and that's to catch an Apache trout, which is only found in this part of the world in literally three rivers right here. First, we're gonna go get some intel and go load up on some flies that hopefully will give us a shot at these fish. We're gonna go to the Lazy Trout in Greer, Arizona, 
I don't even think it's really a town. It's in the National Forest. But Cinda told us that the owner, Joel, is a knowledgeable fly angler. He's got what we need, and he may have some advice to give us the best shot at these fish. We're about to be there, see what he's got to say. He's got all kinds of stuff. Hey. I'll see you then. All right. You Joel? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Hey, Rob. Good to meet you, man. Oh, there. Brooks. Hey, Brooks. Nice, nice to meet you. you. This is a sweet spot. Thanks. Super cool. Yeah. And Cinda Howard, you know? Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. She said if we needed flies, this was the only place oh, to that's come. Really yeah. Nice of her yeah. to say. I've worked to be able to brag that I've got the biggest selection of trout flies on the mountain. Yeah, well, we want to pick up a few things, and we're going to go today for a patch of trout. Yesterday, we went on the, the East Fork of the Black yeah. and did pretty well for a couple. Texas and North Carolina boys that don't know what we're doing. We think we're gonna go to uh, West Baldy and like hike up from there. Cinda, yeah. Cinda basically said go like hike a mile like and the then sheep, start like fishing. Sheep crossing, sheep crossing exactly, yeah. 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 I think that's, I know it's been high water. We've been kind of. That's the hard part. I was using sinking line. Oh, you know, just, in, just to get it down. Just to get it down wow. in some places. Cause the holes are all still there, but it's just that swift water over the top. Yeah, we've been basically delaying the Apache trout thing, hoping that each day it's coming down. I mean, it's been warm, and yeah. Cinda said every day you can delay it would be good. So we're gonna Thanks. give it a Thanks shot so today. Much. For sure, thank you. Don't forget to grab your ice and firewood. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and she yeah, probably told you this, but you just have to look at the river and just imagine if this were gigantic, I would fish this little bit of this little bit and just keep fishing that little bit, but it's yeah. just on this scale. Yeah, you know I mean? yeah. It's crazy. So we're gonna go just give it a shot. But if you had fly recommendations well, I mean, or something to try. The funny thing was, and they all sold out because I told too many people about it, but red woolly and black bugger. woolly buggers. I've got woolly buggers. So do you have any that have like orange or black to them? I think so. I mean, orange or red? Yeah. Because I think what was happening, because I was throwing a black and I was getting a few bites, swinging it down, pulling it back up. Okay. But I thought, it's so stained. So I put on that one that's got a little bit of fire to it. Yeah. And it was just every cast after that. Oh, wow. So I think they could pick it up. I think mine are like an olive green, but with orange heads. That'll do it. The, yeah, because yeah. then other people were catching them on the egg sucking leech. Okay. Just because they had that orange that orange. standing okay. out. Okay. So as far as like recommendations, send us the way to go on that. Yeah. But I can just tell you what's been working for me. And it's just something that... Well, hasn't. that's nothing that we she talked about or we I've thought about. Well, it's kind of a weird thing right now. Yeah. That shouldn't work right now. Right, right. But just because the water's so high, it's I use those for freshwater drum in Oklahoma. Like, totally different. You know, fish this It's bit, really yeah. weird, yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, but that's what people have been doing. In the streams, it's all about kind of a bigger profile. And then something, whether it's flash or whether it's color. color. Like bright color to stand out. Especially with the water a little higher, yeah. a, little, a little more yeah. dirty. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I'd love to tell you about, you know, 16 different flies, but those are the two. No, that's, you that's, know what I mean? that's, that's fine. That's working right now. And like I said, we've got some other stuff we could try, but this is not the kind of size I was planning to throw for these Apache trout. So, surprised. yeah, so well, I am surprised. They are. I am surprised, and so I'm glad we, we you, stopped in because I was in the wrong mindset. No, you, I was thinking a little dry. And no, a, but that's that's correct too. Well, yeah, we maybe we'll set up one yeah. with something bigger and then one with. It's just, you know, and Cinda knows this about me. I can't. I, my eyesight's apparently fine, <laughs> but like throwing dries, I yeah. cannot concentrate on it. That's why we were throwing hoppers like this yes. big, uh, just so we could see it. And just then so actually at the end that. of the day, I caught a pretty small brown on this like gaudy, obnoxiously yeah. big hopper. So yeah, this whole place does just not what we expected. It's, yeah. it's been sweet. We've really been enjoying it. We just got a few days left, so we're trying to kind of cram in. If we go knock out Apache trout today, that really opens up our options because we doing that backup day. We don't need it. So, yeah. so wish us luck. Well, sweet, man. Well, I think we're going to pick up a few more flies. Okay, and, yeah. um, man, thanks oh, so yeah. much for all the Absolutely. advice. Yeah, oh, super, pleasure. tremendously helpful. Yep. Okay, good. I, if, like There's I said, if I, get, if I get a okay. report. Any to, yeah, let us know. We're, we're open to anything. So. Yeah, thanks, thanks, Joel. Appreciate it. Okay. All right, well, leaving the lazy trout now. Joel, the owner, and his wife, Ashley, just delightful people. Super nice. Joel was super helpful. Oh, gosh. And just what a sweet little store. I mean, this is in Apache National Forest. It's basically the only shop around. If you're camping here or whatever, they sell all kinds of necessities from liquor, groceries, all kinds of cute little knickknacks, tons of fishing gear. And it's the place to get flies if you find yourself in the area. But Joel gave us some good leads, some good intel on both his Apache trout as well as kayak fishing. But now, time to head up into the mountains 
and get after some Apache trout, see if we can't get this done. All right, so we were told to hike a mile up this West Baldy Trail before we even start fishing. But the water looks good. It looks much different than the East Fork of the Black River we've been fishing. It looks fishy. It's going to be a totally different ball game, kind of relearning what we're doing here, but beautiful day, beautiful weather. feels great out here. And pretty well established trail, so the hiking really is not too hard. Hi, Mom. Hi, Brenda. All right, so we just hiked up about a mile, maybe a little bit more from the trailhead, basically trying to get away from people and away from where the kind of casual fly fishermen stop and fish. We're trying to get up ahead of where the bulk of the masses come to. And really the landscape kind of transformed. We were out in this kind of open meadow in this little valley. It was beautiful and wide open. Now we're in here and it's kind of snag city. We got downed pine trees all across the river which is gonna make it a little tougher to fish, but that's also the structure that these Apache trout are gonna be hiding up and in and behind. And so it's just kind of the nature of the beast, but it looks super fishy, tons of places for these trout to hang out. I got a feeling we're gonna be getting snagged a bunch. I'm starting off with more of a, a, kind of what we were doing on the East Fork of the Black River, a dry dropper. So we've got this beautiful, I mean, look at that, just like work of art, beautiful little grasshopper that's gonna float. And then down below it, I've got a little Copper John type of thing, just a little nymph real small and that's going to be dragging behind it and in the water and that's probably what's more likely to get bit. Brooks is going to be using basically an egg sucking leech and the purpose of that is just something heavier. The flow is up right now from all the snow melt. It's going to get down and it's got a really bright head and so in this kind of stained water it's moving real swift. They're definitely going to see it. So we've got both those rigged up on these Orvis four weights, these fiberglass rods, the super fines and we're going to be basically just kind of handing them back and forth to each other, taking turns, working our way up the creek and uh, yeah, see if one or the other gets bit, and if not, we'll, we're gonna, we got plenty of options for flies. But for right now, we're just gonna start slinging some bugs, see what we can make happen. It's beautiful here though, peaceful, quiet, it's gorgeous. Yeah. You ready to do it? Yes, sir. Let's get it. Yeah, yeah. Well, that didn't take long. And Brooks is already hung up. The third cast. Folks, I think we're gonna be editing out a lot of this today. But I mean, I think that's it, man. If we're not getting hung up, we're not gonna be catching fish. They're gonna be up in that stuff. <sighs> what you think of Brooks? <laughs> I'm just gonna enjoy the day. <laughs> Probably just maybe nestle up under a tree and take a little cowboy nap. <laughs> no, uh, immediately totally different than what we were doing and realizing we got our work cut out. <laughs> but that's okay. We adapt and overcome. And there are mosquitoes. Oh yeah, and there's those. Curveball. Curveball. Apparently they don't, they're allergic to these fork of the Black River, but they're loving the little Colorado. Yeah, we didn't have any mosquitoes, but they're prevalent here. I'm trying to figure out which one of these looks like a mosquito. <laughs> Match that. <laughs> no, yeah, this is gonna be interesting. It's gonna be a lot of trial and error for sure. We'll get it done. Oh yeah. Probably. Oh, yeah. After my nap. <laughs> How do you fish this? <laughs> uh. And so I don't know if you can see this, but that's snow on the ground where we met a guy fishing earlier. He's in shorts. And that snow is rapidly melting all up the mountain. And that snow melt is what has this water so high and fast. That snow is our enemy right now, making this super difficult. This stuff's ripping. Oh, dude, I mean, it's obviously still people catching it. Yeah. 
All right, guys. Uh, situation update. Apache trout. This is turning into a bust here today. Um, this high water, we have been warned by everyone we've talked to that basically come back in three weeks, that the conditions right now are just damn near unfishable, and that is how it's feeling right now. We fished it hard the last four hours or so. A lot of slow pockets that we thought, man, if there's a fish anywhere, it's gotta be in there. And um, we've made some great casts. We've also made a bunch of horrendous casts, but we have hit enough spots that looked great with great presentations and not had a bite that we are aborting this mission. It's about four in the afternoon, so we got a little time. So we're gonna hike back out. We're about two miles from the truck. We're gonna get back there and try something different. We're not gonna, we're gonna quit beating our heads against this particular wall. We're gonna go find a new wall. It does hurt. <laughs> hurts my ego. Yeah. Gave it the old college try. Let's keep moving. Good thing about getting skunked in this place is it is beautiful. <laughs> so you know you don't catch fish. We did go hiking in a great spot. All right, guys. West Baldy, total bust. The West Baldy bust. <laughs> we were warned that the conditions right now were not gonna make that easy, but that was our best shot at a wild Apache trout. Fish and Game told us to go there. Cinda, Joel, all said great spot, except for right now, just too high of water. And we maybe arrogantly said, nah, we're gonna go make this happen, get our Apache. And we did not. Instead, we just hiked up and down that mountain, got attacked by a billion mosquitoes, and did not come away with anything. But the day's not over. We got a little bit of daylight left, and there's one other spot that Joel told us we might be able to yank an Apache out of, and it's actually, ironically, here in town. Now, town is a strong word, but we're here in Greer, and he said that the Little Colorado, the same river, we're way downstream now, so the flow should be more manageable, and that there are some stocked Apache trout in here. We're gonna see if we can't scratch this species off our list. This is kind of a fourth quarter Hail Mary. This is our last day here. This is our last ditch effort. We've only got a couple hours left. Let's see if we can make it happen. I'm hopeful. I'm not giving up yet. Would not be our first fourth quarter comeback. That's the way they go every time. Yeah, yeah. I got a good feeling. Staying positive. I'm gonna do the marsh to get to this next spot. And we're gonna try to throw a Hail Mary for these Apache trout. I'm gonna give this a shot. Dude, I had a fish following it. He might have eaten it, I couldn't tell. Oh, fish on it. Came up to it. Or it kind of is where those two currents come together. Got him, got him. <gasps> he hit it. Yeah. That's the hard part of fishing upstream, huh? Yeah, I saw him. Oh, he saw him. <sighs> so we really think outside the box now, ladies and gents. I got a salmon egg fly and what's called a San Juan worm, basically just super bright, gaudy, can't miss it, no dry hopper, dry fly. We're trying to get this thing, run these things along the bottom and just had a fish come up and take it. But the problem is we're kind of fishing downstream. And when you do that, they're always facing upstream and you can set the hook and you pull it right out of their mouth. But there's just not a great place to do it upstream. And it's hard to know when you get a bite, but that fish we saw clear as day. I don't know if it was an Apache, but it was about the right size. That'll be like the ironic part. We did all this hiking in the middle of nowhere and right here in the middle of town. Got him. This might be one. You want me to net or? This might be one. That's one. That's it. Yeah? That's it, dude. <laughs> and it's a good one. Hey. 
I was just all about to take over. <laughs> all that troughing through the wilderness, hiking, and here we are in the middle of Greer, right in the middle of town, right above a bridge. Well, it's just how it goes sometimes. Dude, we did it. No way. I'm the freaking egg. The way you can tell the Apache trout, and this is just like the perfect no-brainer example, is it's got black spots on its back and no other coloration on it in terms of spots. So a brown trout is gonna have colored spots down the lateral line. This just has these black spots. That is an Apache trout, and that is a big one. They do not get a whole lot bigger than that. Joel at the Lazy Trout said, you know, one thing you can try is an egg pattern in this slow water right here in Greer. And I thought, that sounds silly, but let's give it a shot. And he basically was just saying that something bright is gonna get it done, because they're gonna see it and they're gonna want it. And so I had this little tandem rig of an egg and then what's called the San Juan worm below it. And it came up and it hit that egg as it swung by. And I mean, not the first cast. No. Not the first cast at all. Yeah, your couple turned into a uh... About a dozen. A few more. <laughs> but I just had a feeling. I'm glad you got it done. Look at that. Now this is a stocked Apache trout. We were going for the wild ones up in West Baldy. This is not a wild one, but still it feels good to finally catch this elusive fish. And then they also have the white markings on the... And they have the white markings on this, these back, these anal fins. You can see that there. Oh my gosh. You guys, I cannot tell you how good that feels to catch this little fish. I do not think Brooks or I have worked this hard for a fish this small in a long time, if ever, but it feels so good. I was really starting to feel like we were gonna leave this part of the world without catching an Apache trout. This is the only place in the world you can do it, and it feels so good. The conditions didn't allow us to really fish for a wild one, so we got a good reason to come back, but man, it feels good to catch one and to catch a pretty good one. Uh, just what a special experience out here. We have worked really, really hard for this fish and uh, just so cool. That is a species scratched off the bucket list that you can only do right here in the White Mountains of Arizona. What a treat, what a special place. There's so much water to fish here, so much to explore. We've been here for eight days and haven't even scratched the surface. We're gonna let this little fish on its way. You're allowed to keep four of these a day and a lot of people do, but we, these are special fish. There are not that many of them in here, so we're gonna put this girl back and let her uh, continue building the population here. Bloop. And there she goes. My man. Oh, that was awesome. Can't believe we got it done. All right, brother, you're up. See if we can get you yours. Oh, man. I thought we were, hadn't lost hope, but it was hanging on by 5X tippet. I mean, just hanging on by a thread. In, in true typical fourth quarter Robert fashion. <laughs> That's right. The fourth quarter comeback kid strikes again. All right, let's see if we can scratch one more. Yeah, let's get you yours. Now we know. I mean, we saw those hits back up there. Those were probably yeah. Apaches. And this looks real similar. And uh, I had just about given up. I was like, one more flick as <laughs> far up in there as I could. And I yeah. said, I'm either going to hang up or catch a fish. I was about to say that. And then my line mm. stopped. I thought I was hung up. And there it was. Oh, that's awesome, dude. Sweet. Oh, that's sweet. A little stealth mode up to basically where as soon as you think you can get a cast up river of that. Dude, there it is. Oh. Sweet. Oh my God, he did it. He did it. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Dude, that was wild. I thought for sure I was hung up. This one looks like it might be high, like a a hybrid. Oh, that's a brown, I think. Brown or a brookie. Yeah. There's brookies in there. Look at that. We came back to the first spot where we got a couple, a couple swipes. And Brooks may have his or it may be something else. Oh, come on. Nice. Got him. And the egg just popped out. <laughs> oh, yeah, dude. That's a brown. That's a pretty big one. Yeah, it's pretty brown. You know what? It's not an Apache, but I'm cool with it. Oh, well, not an Apache. Maybe we weren't getting swipes from Apaches earlier. Uh, let's see it. I think it might be a brown trout. Oh, way bigger fish. Yeah. Look at that. 
Look at that top fin. That, Beautiful. Uh, the, green. Is that the adipose in the back? Yeah. With that red, like. Beautiful. Man, great work, dude. Thanks, dude. Stuck with it up under these willows, which is right where Joel told us they'd be. We got swipes earlier. We were hoping they were Apaches. We moved. Caught an Apache. Now we're back here. And not the Apache Brooks was hoping for, but a really <laughs> nice brown for this little yeah. part of the Little Colorado River. And that's your first fish out of the Little Colorado River. Yeah, man. I'm here for it. Beautiful fish. God, those browns are so pretty. I mean, it was just cool to figure out the pattern to like and do it and get bit. I know it's not the Apache, but like, you know, Missing fish, breaking off, like doing all this stuff, and like to catch it how you're supposed to catch it is like that's that's rewarding in its own right. It's not as easy as you think. You think you think yeah. small fish, that's that's a breeze. Right. It's not. Well, this one still seems healthy, so I guess we'll get it on. Send her on her way. Send her on her way. Give you that beauty. Face shot. All right. Look at that. Sweet. Nice work. We're getting it done, man. Starting to feel like we know what we're doing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fake it till you make it, I suppose. Yeah. Sick. My man. Yes, sir. Just look at this place. Beautiful. Just look at it. Just look at it. First thing you gotta do is listen. I go straight from the bank, gassing up the tank. Cranking up the radio, playing old Hank, and it ain't that long till I'm back at the farm. I'm rolling up the truck, down at the dock. It's time to do some cruising, baby, get a little stuff. It's a Saturday joyride. ride. First at least is the spot. To take the blues away. We're on a boat, we're feeling fine. 